Welcome to another edition of Talk City Greensboro, produced by GTN, featuring interviews and events happening around town. It's an easy way to stay in the know while you're on the go. Subscribe to Talk City on iTunes, Pandora, Google Play, or SoundCloud so you can keep up with what's going on in Greensboro City Government and beyond. I'm your host, Rodney Dawson, and I'm all by myself today, except for my lovely guest that I'll introduce you to later. And I know some of us may be in this position like myself. You probably heard about early childhood development and the formative years of young people and how it helps determine a person's outlook on life. I used to teach myself, mm -hmm. and I taught K-8, so I understand okay. how yeah. important those years are. Um, but perhaps like me, you haven't delved in deeply or taken the time to really understand the importance of that early childhood, that brain development. So today is a great day to listen to Talk City Greensboro, and we're joined by Megan LaFavor with Ready for School, Ready for Life. And thank Perfect. you for coming to Talk City Greensboro and educating here. us. Happy to be here. Okay, well, uh, off the, from the start, how'd you get in this line of work? So I was an educator as well. Okay. Uh, I was a reading specialist in elementary age group, and... But started hearing, hearing about Ready for School, Ready for Life, which is who I work for. And they, about 10 years ago, got a bunch of community stakeholders together to say, how can we help with early childhood development? What do we need to do to get these kids ready for kindergarten? Because we know if they enter kindergarten doors ready to learn, that they have a better success rate later on in life. And so um, I just got interested in it and then came on board as a staff member about three years ago. You know, I heard your... Uh, I guess you could say, could you call the Maryland governor your governor? Do you still call him your, you're, you're from Baltimore, from Maryland. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I heard your governor talking last year about the importance um, of those formative years, zero to five. I've heard four to six. Um, can you talk to us about the importance of that? And also, I'm putting you on the spot. It's not That's a question fine. we have on the paper. Okay. Break it down demographically and how different uh, ethnicities are affected by it. Absolutely. So we know 80% of brain development happens by age three and 90% by age five. And what that means in lay terms are babies are born with all these neurons in their brain and we need to get them as connected as possible so that when they enter school, they can learn as fast as they can. So if those neurons are connected and they're strong, that information comes in super quickly and they're learning at a faster rate than their peers. So what we are seeing, what research is showing is that a lot of discrepancies are already showing up by age two. By two. By two. That though they're not, you know, if they're looking at a child's brain at age two, they're already there's already gaps between can, different socioeconomic how, classes. How do you check at two years old? What do you check for? You're looking to see how many of those connections are present okay. and how strong they are. And so when you're thinking about, um, there are a bunch of different studies, but one in particular talks about language that a child hears. And so if a child is born into a family where their caregivers are talking to them all the time, they're learning new words constantly, their brains are being built at a faster rate versus a child who might be born into a household where their caregivers don't understand the importance of that, of that talk, and they might be in a super stressful environment where there's high stress and they're working multiple jobs and they're not kind of a stable caregiver. They're in some capacity that knows this information, that can understand what do I need to do to get my child's brain built at their fullest potential. And so that's where our work comes in because this is just the basics are um, this campaign that we're just trying to move forward to get people to understand that we all have a role in this and there, there are easy, easy ways that we can all help build a child's brain from birth. All the, uh, you've kind of explained what the basic Guilford is and, and uh, how the basics help with brain development of young children. Uh, but going a little further, are the basics part of a larger local effort? And if so, who's involved in it? So right here in Guilford County, we have the Basics Guilford, and we are part of a learning network of basics communities that are international, actually. It all started in Boston out of research done at Harvard. So the okay. Boston Basics were the first basics community. And that all that research out of Harvard broke it down to five very simple science-based things that families can do with their children to get those brains developed. And so Ron Ferguson is the founder of The Basics, and he still teaches at Harvard, mm -hmm. um, and he's the champion of this effort. But he has put this framework together that any community can pick it up okay. and say, I want to be a basics community. I want to move this movement forward. Um, so like I said, it's over in over 100 different communities uh, 
both nationwide and international. They're in Brazil and Bermuda and uh, Australia even talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, talk about the basics. And so uh, when we heard about it, we thought this would be a great way to weave in this work with all of the other work that's happening in Guilford County around early childhood. How long have you been doing it here? Uh, the basics have been here for five years. For five We've been years. talking about the basics for about five years. Any schools you can highlight or, or initiatives? Of course. So with the basics, we reach the idea is community saturation. Mm -hmm. We want families to see the basics all across the community. So we work with pediatric offices. We work with Head Start and Early Head Start. We work with uh, the housing authorities. Mm. We're in a couple of barber shops yeah. with that information. Um, so what it is is really these five simple things and. We can hear about what we need to do to help with child development. And as a caregiver, as I'm sure you know, mm -hmm. having kids of your own, you might know it, but then when it comes to that day-to-day, -day, you're in the grind. You're trying right. to figure out how am I getting food on the table? How am I getting my kids to sleep? And so the basics are just, again, so simple that it, they're just these reminders to help support you in your caregiving efforts each day. I don't know if you remember uh, in Living Color, and they used to do this skit about the Jamaican family that had multiple jobs. <laughs> I'm not Jamaican, but I did have multiple jobs. Yeah. And I worked in radio, too, <clears throat> mm -hmm. before I was teaching. And I'm just in here uh, uh, in awe with your marketing plan. Who was in the room? Or how did you come up with, let's go to the pediatric uh, offices. Let's go to the housing authority. And let's go to these barbershops and beauty salons. You're getting into the community and making people aware. Yeah. It's an excellent program, it seems. So it's it's the model. This is mm -hmm. what, you know, we know families are in different places. Families might not have their child in a full-time child care facility. F families might just have them with them all day long, whether they're, you know, out running their errands or, you know, especially in these early childhood spaces where it's expensive to send your child to child care, mm -hmm. a good child care facility. And so we need it across the community. Uh, with the five base, I'll run through them really quick too. So it's maximize love and manage stress. So mm -hmm. we know that families, um, might have a lot of stress, but as the caregivers from birth, we have to model for our kids about how to deal with stress and show them the love so that their brains are ready to kind of take this information in and learn. Um, and so we can talk about that in a lot of different places around the community, right? Uh, talk, sing, and point. So making sure that we're having these communication constantly with our children so they're learning language, you know, so that really shows up, especially at pediatricians' offices mm -hmm. where we're saying, you know, Let's have more conversations with our kids. Let's get the tablets out of their hands. Right. Let's have that face-to-face -to, -face to really help build their language skills. Uh, count, group, and compare is another one. So making sure parts of our brain, you know, we have all these different sections. Mm -hmm. So that math and science part of our brain, that can start from birth too. Okay. You know, you can be at the grocery store. So talking about, you know, Another scenario, you're at the grocery store, you have two apples, and you say, I want to buy the bigger one. Which one's bigger? I'm going to buy this one. So, again, just narrating your day right. and having, like, these quick interactions with your child so we can enforce the basics there. You know, it, so, again, it depends on where you are in the community, which part of the message of the basics come out, but we want it to be seen everywhere. Now, um, doing the support takes some resources, mm -hmm. and uh, like any organization, you know, it can be challenging getting those resources. So how can people help, particularly businesses that are in the area? How can they support this effort for uh, caregivers for our young people? So the main thing is just talking about it. So okay. making sure that businesses are one of the places that we connect, um, a lot of with HR departments, so that the idea is, as citizens, we all have trusted individuals that we go to for information. So I, again, I mentioned the pediatrician, I mentioned the mm -hmm. barber, you know, but your employer is a really important right. piece of the pie. And so there is a huge effort in Greensboro, especially to having family forward workplaces. Right. Um, so that initiative is actually being currently run through the chamber and through Action Greensboro. And we're working with them because if, fam if um, employers are coming to the table saying, we want to invest in our employees, we want to be a family forward workplace, the basics are an easy thing for them to weave in. So I out in the community doing training. So if employer wants to come in and do a training for new parents and say, here's an easy thing to do. I'm there. I did one for the city of Greensboro yeah. two weeks ago. Um, getting just information about how to do this, how, you know, I mentioned the first three, the next one's explore through movement and play. So mm -hmm. encouraging employers to 
get their employees out and learn about the community, about safe places to engage their child in play, um, and then read and discuss stories is that last basic. And so making sure that families understand, you know, how to get connected to the libraries. There's a free resource in Guilford County for Dolly Parton Imagination Library mm -hmm. where families can sign up for those free books. So equipping employers with all of this information makes them – a better employer and keeps their employees engaged. And if an employee shows up to a workplace where their employer is investing in them, and it might not be monetarily, it's mm -hmm. just, it can also just be that messaging that we give out there. Um, and the basics is an easy one and a free one <laughs> to right. do uh, for employers to talk to their employees. Well, and I can brag a little bit and say the city of Greensboro does a fine job with they that. Do. And uh, we here at GTN, uh, you know, we air on Spectrum Channel 13. We're running a uh, promotional, uh, 30, 30 second commercial promoting Family Forward. Mm -hmm. And it's been running for quite a while. So mm -hmm. um, uh, it would be great to see a lot more of our entities within the city um, jump on this effort. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the goal is by the end of 2024 that 85,000 employees in Guilford County, we want to be working for Family Forward Workplace. Okay. So we're we're making strides. We're getting there. But just getting the word out and having this as an easy tool to check off to say, yes, I'm doing this for my employees is fantastic. Well, Megan, it's a lot of work, but meaningful work, and I'm glad you're doing it. Thanks. Uh, how can we learn more if we want to know about this and other programming that's coming on? Can you tell us websites, uh, social media? Yeah, so basicsguilford.org is where you'll find all of our stuff. Um, but the basics.org, too, is the national one, so Eve, that has even – deeper toolkits, but I would encourage you to start at ours. We're also on social media on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Okay. Um, you know, again, it's just finding out that information of how to help families in their everyday lives. This doesn't have to be something extra. And that's what we talk to families a lot about is you can weave the basics into any moment of your day. It just has to be intentional. So we do have um, another resource that's great is we have a free text messaging program in Guilford okay. County, where if you sign up on our website, um, uh, you get a message on Mondays about developmentally what's happening for your child. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's birth age five. You put in their birth date so you know exactly how old they are. Right. So they get a very specific specific text message for that and then on Wednesdays an activity to do with them so again just a reminder of how to weave something in your day-to-day -day. and then Fridays is a more literacy based message about what's happening in Guilford County around literacy and what you can do to help your child before they even enter a kindergarten understood hey do you miss right. teaching you miss the classroom I do, but this is a fun way to do it in a different way, teaching adults how to be better caregivers and getting our whole community around it. Because it's not just my kid, it's all of our kids. Right. And so we want that next generation to enter those doors of that kindergarten classroom ready to learn. Megan, and ready for school, ready for life. We need more like you. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you the, it. Thank you for the work you do. Absolutely. All right, you learn about Basics Guilford uh, going on at Ready for School, Ready for Life. And thank you again to Megan LaFaber for joining us. And you can tune in to uh, the Talk City podcast and learn more about it. And you can subscribe weekly to Talk City Greensboro, again, on iTunes, Pandora, Google Play. And don't forget, you can download Talk City from SoundCloud. That's it for this week. And thank you for tuning in to Talk City. Be sure to watch GTN, your official source for news and information about the city of Greensboro. GTN is available on Spectrum Channel 13, AT&T, Uverse Channel 99, and Lumos 31. GTN also streams live on Roku and the city's website at greensboro-nc.gov.